We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE. I'm here with Jeff Kelly, my co-host. SiliconANGLE comes to these events. We extract the signal from the noise. We go out, we scour these events for the very best guests that are at these shows and bring them to you. They share their opinions, they're thought leaders, they're practitioners, they're technologists. Anjul Bombri is here. She's a multi-time CUBE guest. She's the vice president of Big Data and Stream, something we're going to talk about. Stream's a very interesting product at IBM. Anjul, welcome back to the CUBE. Thanks. Always Thank a pleasure you. to see you. Uh, we're here at Hadoop Summit. Uh, a lot of discussions going on about various things that we're going to get into, but let's start with Big Insights. That is your flagship offering uh, for the big data group at IBM. You guys have been evolving the platform. You just mm -hmm. made an announcement in June, so give us the update on, uh, on Big Insights and your group. Sure, and uh, it's always a pleasure to be here. Um, so we just uh, announced uh, Big Insights, uh, our uh, next release, a uh, couple of weeks back, and uh, a lot of the capabilities that we have uh, made generally available uh, it's interesting, have also been, um, you know, were discussed uh, in, in um, as uh, capabilities needed by the enterprise for Hadoop to really stick in the enterprise uh, throughout the day here. So, so I think uh, that's really good. Um, the, uh, the, the first thing there is that we have brought uh, SQL um, to Hadoop. And, uh, and by that, uh, what I mean is that now we are providing via our big SQL capabilities, uh, complete ANSI SQL 2010 uh, support. So it's uh, all uh, ANSI SQL 2010 compliant, very f feature rich. Um, and we are also bringing the processing, uh, you know, the MPP processing uh, of uh, data, uh, structured data to Hadoop uh, so from a performance standpoint, uh, this is something that is, uh, um, you know, the enterprise customers are really going to be uh, wanting to, that as they are using SQL, they are expecting the same kind of performance that they were getting when they were using SQL uh, on structured data and relational databases. Uh, so this is something, uh, you know, both from a feature function standpoint as well as from performance, um, uh, I think, uh, people will really like what we have released there. And uh, we are doing this by not moving data out of Hadoop into any database on the side, right? The data stays in the Hadoop file system. We don't move the data around. And we are able to run SQL, whether it is uh, you know, data which is in Hadoop file system, it may be in Hive, HBase, um, comma separated files, whatever the case might be. Um, the the other key part of uh, the Big SQL support is that we have uh, our BI tools like uh, Cognos and MicroStrategy all supporting Big SQL, which is really important for um, customers that are doing uh, or augmenting their warehouse uh, to do to bring in different kinds of data uh, into Hadoop. Um, that uh, you know their existing um, investments that they have made in Cognos or uh, maybe MicroStrategy and others uh, that they can continue to leverage those uh, just because you know they have data in Hadoop and uh, now that we are giving them SQL, um, it's equally important that tools like Cognos continue to work. So so there's very tight integration that we are providing uh, with the likes of uh, uh, the BI tools like Cognos. Uh, obviously both on the distributed platform as well as, uh, you know, there is still a world out there which people uh, want, uh, don't talk about that much, which is the mainframe world. And now we are, uh, you know, uh, the next month we are going to be releasing this whole Big Insights and uh, Cognos support for our customers who are on mainframe. Right, so big data is not something that is uh, only on a certain uh, platform, right? Our, um, uh, you know, there are big transactional systems that are still running on the mainframe. And it's equally important in, uh, for those uh, customers and the applications to be able to bring the polystructured store called Hadoop in those enterprises 
and be able to use tools where they are accessing data, which is in Hadoop, as well as uh, transactional systems, which are on uh, mainframes like DB2Z. Uh, so, um, you know, with Big SQL, we are really tying all of this together. Yeah, so, uh, in fact, you, of course, you guys made the announcement, the big announcement in April, Blue Acceleration, we had Bernie Spang on at, mm -hmm. uh, at Wikibon, we, 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 we've beaten that one pretty hard, <laughs> and uh, this is good, but so you, you point out, customers want instant gratification, essentially. You know, mm -hmm. They want the mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. experience in Hadoop that they have in the transactional world, and that's obviously a challenge for your business. So you, you have this offering of, of, of big insights and, a, and it essentially comprises IBM's distribution of, mm -hmm. of Hadoop. But talk, talk a little bit more about what's inside of Big Insights. What is that all about? Uh -huh. So um, Big Insights is our offering which is, um, where, which is completely based on Apache Hadoop. Uh, so there is no uh, forking or there is no, it's pure Apache Hadoop and um, what we are providing on top of that is capabilities like Big SQL, which are also ANSI SQL compliant, so that customers can access data uh, once it reaches a structured form in Hadoop uh, using um, you know, SQL, which they have been used to, uh, as well as we are providing um, um, from um, the standpoint of security, there is uh, capabilities that we've added where you can uh, you know, secure your data, govern your data, uh, bringing in uh, things like uh, data encryption, masking, uh, so which is where we are providing integration with like Guardium, uh, where you can uh, now look at a complete, have a complete audit trail of uh, you know, who has accessed what data, who has run which MapReduce jobs, uh, so, so having that audit trail is very important because uh, you know otherwise the data is just out there for anybody to access, which 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 is okay when you are maybe doing some sandbox, but there is always in the enterprise there is a governed side of the enterprise, and and that's really important that you know we you don't lose uh, <laughs> control of the governed side of the data. So rack F for Hadoop, basically, right? <laughs> Resource access control facility for all you mainframers yeah, yeah. out there. <laughs> so, see, we love the mainframe. <laughs> yeah, well, well that's a really important point, especially when you're moving into, you know, when you want to actually use Hadoop to support some mission critical applications, then it's exposing customer data, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. to different parts of your organization, or potentially even outside your organization, clearly you've got to have the governance that's right. and the rules uh, apply to that. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you a question a little bit about the impact of Hadoop on IBM's overall big data business. So, mm -hmm. you know, we hear a lot about uh, the, one of the use cases for Hadoop is moving some of the workload from your, mm -hmm. what can be an expensive data warehouse into mm -hmm. Hadoop where mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. uh, still have access to it but it's less expensive to store and things mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. we know uh, certainly IBM has the kind of the IBM uh, pure data uh, system for, uh, for the, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, analytics mm -hmm. so based on some of the Natiza technology, more mm -hmm. of the data warehousing technology. Mm -hmm. You've also got pure data for Hadoop. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, how is that impacting your business? Are you seeing that? Are people looking to use Hadoop and potentially move off of, move some of their data from Natiza into Hadoop, um, and how do you see that over the long term impacting mm -hmm. kind of uh, your business? Mm -hmm. So, so it depends on like obviously what uh, what Hadoop is doing is it is enabling um, many new classes of applications which were uh, which were um, maybe expensive um, just because you know the cost of putting so much data in a warehouse uh, could clearly um, would not be a cost effective way uh, for some of the scenarios. But, but just as an example, right, like, um, uh, you know, uh, from uh, when we spoke s uh, specifically, say, about Natiza and, and Hadoop, I and mean, we have customers that are using Hadoop, uh, uh, you know, by uh, putting Hadoop uh, in, in next to their warehouses and really augmenting their warehouse. And, and the, the, the usage that we are seeing is that since uh, Hadoop lets you bring in all kinds of data, it, which is also very noisy data, um, into uh, you know, the Hadoop file system, obviously you can do that by in a very cost effective manner and you don't have to really uh, process a lot of your data, just dump it in there and then you can see you know, what, what do you really care about there. So, so, so to that extent, I think it's, um, it's a great, uh, great technology uh, for, um, for all warehouse customers to be able to bring in 
data which doesn't really belong in a relational database, initially at least, right? Mm -hmm. And once they have done the, the filtering and analysis, they may identify that there is a, now a subset of the data which they were not leveraging uh, initially to make decisions, and they may decide actually to move that data back into the warehouse. Mm -hmm. So, because for, for um, certain kinds of applications, the warehouse is probably the highest performant uh, way to access that data or analyze that data. So leaving that, so, so in some sense, it's also the reverse that is happening, right? That uh, if, they were, if they were only making decisions based on the data that's in the warehouse, um, you know, you can only squeeze it that many ways. I call it that you can only, you know, just because you keep torturing the same data, you're not going to get different results. So you got to stop torturing the data, right? And um, now you don't have to torture the data, but you bring new types of data mm -hmm. and get new insights, figure out what else you were, le you, you know, you were, you were not capturing and bring that into the warehouse so that you can actually do more and have better insights than uh, you know, what you were trying to accomplish by torturing the data. Mm -hmm. so, so stop the torture, <laughs> bring in the new data in, the where, in, in, in Hadoop, move, find out what's useful, move it back into the warehouse, and you'll get new kinds of correlations and insights. So you're bringing these worlds together. I mean, yeah. IBM's always done, and of course, there's a lot of tweets going on today around IBM serving up data at Wimbledon, you know, mm -hmm. pun intended. Mm -hmm. uh, IBM's always done the Olympics. Um, so you've always been there, but you're bringing, you know, your mojo is around a lot around Hadoop and mm -hmm. big insights, and you're bringing those two worlds mm -hmm. together, and mm -hmm. they're colliding in a mm -hmm. fairly big way. In a nice um, way. Are they? That's my <laughs> question. Is it, is it all harmonious, or is there some dissonance? What are you seeing in the customer base? So, so you know, whenever there is new technology, there is always going to be uh, some disruption, and uh, and which is fine, right? In the end, um, I mean from an IBM standpoint, we want to bring to the customers what's best for them, right? We, we want to make sure that they are able to leverage the technology that is the right one uh, to, to solve their business problems. So we would never discard any technology just because it's going to cause disruption to you know, something which, is, which has prevailed for the last decade or so. Mm. Uh, so looking ahead, uh, we firmly believe that um, you know we have to embrace this, which is what we have done. Um, and uh, it's it's not that uh, you know we've embraced this. We are getting it ready for the enterprise uh, by really helping not just our customers, but you know there's a whole world of SQL programmers out there, and really helping them cross the chasm. Uh, making sure that the that the tools and the skills that they have invested in, they can continue to leverage that, not just for you know what they've had traditionally, but also for these new technologies. I mean, that's where we are really surrounding Apache Hadoop and building an ecosystem of capabilities around it, uh, so that uh, the customers really get the best of both worlds, and and they can now actually implement new classes of applications. And, and really uh, you know, providing a way that you run your workload where it suits and fits the best. And uh, you know, it's not an either or, uh, it's, it's an extension and an augmentation. IBM's always had the ability to interact with, sell to um, the, the upper you know, senior management audience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but it's, it especially strikes me, Anjul, in, in this big data world, you've got, it's like Merv was saying today, you got the, the guys in the hoodies, the guys in the suits. <laughs> Who do you interact with? Who are the customers of uh -huh. Big Insights? Are they hoodies, are they the suits, are they both? They're both, mm. uh, you know, because we are um, obviously, uh, you know, the customers that have been with us for a long time, uh, and uh, you know, we are loyal to them, and uh, you know, uh, they are loyal to us because we watch out for them. We are looking at the trends in the market, uh, from both from a technology standpoint as well as what are what are the new insights that they need so that you know they can serve their customers better so we are bringing to them here's the new technology here are, here are the new possibilities that were not there before and uh, you know how do we bring it to them and then of course we also have uh, 
you know, the new class, new customers where maybe they don't have a lot of legacy uh, to, um, you know, that they have to bring to the next decade, for example. And uh, they are finding it also very attractive because they know that we are embracing the open source and, and, and we are building a good ecosystem around it so that they'll be able to solve their problems quickly with us. Mm -hmm. And which is important for them because they have to survive, right? They're just starting out. So for them to really become, you know, the, the next um, uh, uh, bigger companies, they have to bet on on companies where which will take them forward in the in the next decade. And we we don't have much time, but uh, but it, my, I I got to ask you about streams because I'm so yeah. fascinated yes, by this, me this too. product. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's a product that was organic out of, out yep. of IBM's uh, research labs. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been some startups. I know some of the folks spun out of there. There's a new, mm -hmm. new startup. We're actually going to have them on later. H streaming. So it's a really interesting space, uh -huh. being able to make decisions, allow machines to make decisions on data before persisting it, mm -hmm. truly in real time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what's happening with that product? I mean. So, um, you know, Streams is, um, uh, we've seen uh, so many implementations of uh, where people are leveraging Streams in the telco industry to, um, to analyze call data records at volumes and throughputs that were just not possible before. Uh, to predict customer churn, uh, to gain insights into their consumer and offer them the right promotions and services at the right time without waiting for all this data to, to be persisted somewhere and then take action on it. We've seen uh, deployments of this in healthcare. Uh, you know, you've uh, you've all heard me talk about Data Baby many times, uh, but you know, it, it, it was same data that was before not being able to be processed at the right time mm. to be able to predict certain things, right? In this case, infection in a newborn mm. baby. But the same data, because of Streams technology, is now saving lives. I mean, talk about that as an impact. Uh, we are seeing uh, you know, marketing and ad agencies use Streams, um, where every, every interaction uh, that the customer is having has to be captured, the context has to be captured and the context has to be understood amidst you know, many different kinds of interactions and then the right action needs to be taken. Mm. Three letter government agencies, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, for security, mm. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. this is, I mean, you know, like, uh, we, yeah, in the open source, there, there's a lot of talk now happening about real time analytics. Uh, we've had real time analytics for now the last 10 years. And, uh, and as a platform, uh, the throughput, the consumability of streams, uh, you know, the development environment that we offer to the application developers uh, is something that is really cool and uh, um, I think something that people should try yeah, out. Very excited about uh, that. You know, we have uh, quick start editions of Big Insights as well as streams now available. That way, for development and test, people can download those a and, edition, and try right it there. for free, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, awesome. hopefully, form the same opinions that I have IBM about these products. IBM, really getting it done <laughs> in open source. You guys have been doing that for well over a decade, de two decades, really. Um, mm -hmm. Lou Gerstner called you a recovering alcoholic. I always <laughs> use that line. <laughs> and uh, all right, I'm Jules. Thanks very much for 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 coming back on the Cube. It's Thank great you. to see you as always. All right, we'll be right back. Uh, this is Dave Vellante. We're live, Silicon Angles, The Cube. I'm with Jeff Kelly and John Furrier. We're here at Hadoop Summit in San Jose. We'll be right back after this word. Thank you.